Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. My name is Vermillion. The Modern Warfare 2 beta has been out for two days now, and after putting in well over 20 odd hours, I felt it right to be able to give feedback now on some changes to the overall aspects of the game. However, there are a lot of things to go over from the maps, weapons, perks, streaks, and plenty of other gameplay related items. So I've decided to split my thoughts amongst several videos over the coming week. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about maps. We've had the chance to play four separate maps over the course of the beta. Those maps were Mercury. Mercado Las Almas, Springberg Hotel, Farm 18, and Valderas Museum. Each offering has its pros and cons, which I'll discuss in detail. Mercado Las Almas is the fastest playing map in the beta. It's most definitely Modern Warfare 2's closest option to a shoot house style map. It's also the closest thing to a closed three lane map we've had in the beta. With small connections between lanes, each lane has a few branches, but overall it stays within that three lane formula. Game modes on each map obviously change the flow, and while I've mainly played Domination on this map, not once have I felt spawns being one sided. Including Team Deathmatch, where spawns are known for being chaotic and all over, Domination places the flags on Main Street, Tunnel, and Parking each one having limited angles, three to four on Main Street and the parking area, and only two major paths to get on B. Definitely less to have to focus on, and you normally don't feel overwhelmed while protecting these objectives. Domination is fantastic on this map. I haven't had issues across my playtime. Team Deathmatch has typically felt really chaotic with zero flow in these last couple of Call of Duties, and even on this map, I didn't feel like I was getting shot in the back nine times out of 10. And just recently, I got to play S and D on this map. The three lanes just make it immaculate. Overall, a very balanced map with all all the game modes I played on it. There are some things that I would love to see fixed. There's too much foliage on the back of red tarps, allowing someone to fully conceal themselves in the grass, making them very, very difficult to see. Some of the angles down middle seem a bit one-sided as well for the parking side. You can be prone on top of this RV and not be able to see the enemy due to the contrast difference as well as the overhangs. There's also some ledge hangs for flanks that allow for easy access to kills. I would like to see maybe that adjusted or even possibly not done. Uh, there's also a few glitches that I would love to see fixed on this map, which at the time of recording, one of them was patched. Inside the connector between Market Center and Main Entrance, you could dive through the ATM machine here and be completely out of bounds, allowing you to shoot through the walls at your enemy. For Search and Destroy, this was a little broken as A was directly where this out of bounds was. Another area that I would like to see patched is right outside of the cantina. You'll jump through this window, place a deployable cover, and jump to the arch up to the roof. This is broken as is, but you can go even further by making this jump with another deployable cover and up to the roof here to get sites on the C objective in many, many more places. A really ridiculous spot that absolutely needs to be fixed before launch. There's also some other minor spots that could catch people off guard, such as mantling the wall by silos and hopping up to the blue silos to stand on the edge for an overview of the lane. Overall, I give this map an A plus just for flow, polish, all the game modes work on it. It doesn't feel like anything is overwhelming on the map. Overall, amazing map with just a little bit more tweaks and it could be great. Brainberg Hotel offers a multitude of connections between major points of the map. Almost too many for most players, especially for game modes like Team Deathmatch. Personally, this map is pretty mid, but not the worst for me. Playing this map on Domination offers a better flow to the map as people are forced to focus on three separate points versus just being scattered anywhere around the map. For those that like learning maps, you can 100% do very, very well on this map once you've learned all the ins and outs. If you play this on Team Deathmatch though, I'm sorry, this map is literally just an absolute cluster f this map shines for domination as each major objective has a lot of cover to play around with very little effort to learn each major angle while attacking or defending. Search and Destroy is also kind of mid as the points for the objective are so deep and there's tons of angles to play off of, especially on A with it being inside of this kitchen. Tons of areas to head peek on as well as hide and B just turns into an absolute chaos fest from people flanking through mid, shooting through walls and hiding behind each little tiny cover there is. If this map removed a few of its connector areas, Areas from the main middle area to each side, as well as a couple of the covers around B side, it could easily be managed better by players without needing to rely on checking 25 angles while turning one corner. There's also a bunch of unneeded space, in my opinion. The map is definitely a bit big in terms of its length. On both ends of the map, there's a giant area that's there just to allow to flank even further. Personally, you could cut off parking and the main entrance to make the map play a little faster, and then get rid of the pass between the major areas, and you'll have yourself a much more manageable, most likely enjoyable experience for most players. 
One other thing I noticed while playing Bring Burke Hotel on Search and Destroy is during this round that I was in, I joined in mid game and I was spectating. After a kill, the camera would view out to the far backside of the hotel and the bomb was there and I could see the enemy players guarding the bomb that was dropped. I don't know if this happens on every map, but if it does, it shouldn't because that's free information for just your players dying and spectating. So if you have one person spectating and one person dies that's free information from the bird's eye view angle camera that the map has i don't know why that is that should be taken out of the game you shouldn't be getting free information of a player's location just for spectating your teammate fyi there's also a glitch in this map with deployable cover while not game breaking it still needs to be fixed before launch inside the lobby you can use a deployable cover again to jump on this ledge and walk right through the wall this covers the c objective and can be used to a player's advantage overall c tier map as it is right now with those fixes easily can be a B or A tier map. Moving on to my most hated map, Farm 18. My oh my, this map just lights a fire of rage in me, but I'm going to try and not be biased. Most of the gunfights typically take place right in the middle of the shoot house, with a few outside amongst the rest of the areas that split up the outer ring. I'm just going to say it now, there's a ton of wasted space on this map, like a, a stupid amount of wasted space on this map for most 6v6 modes. Cement mixer, the entirety of dormitories, shooting range, mess hall, mechanic shop, all have very little use to almost no purpose in the 6v6 modes, uh, at least I I feel it because again most of the fights aren't even out there and it's absolutely atrocious to deal with in snd style modes as there's so many places to hide and check for players speaking of which why the fuck is the a side bomb in snd so close to the enemy you can literally plant the bomb within 10 seconds of the round starting with almost zero punishability unless you get sniped from the initial small run over if you and your teammates work together it can be very very one-sided and you could literally cut off about half of this map and it would play almost the same besides the one-off time you have to deal with someone playing tactically behind a new wall every time you kill them after staying there for a couple of kills pretty much everything can be climbed on in this map hell you can even climb through walls yeah that's a thing if this is happening here in this map imagine all sorts of places in warzone that might have this same exact issue sorry i'm just fuming this map literally has not flowed well on any mode i've played and just feels like utter chaos for the sake of chaos to cater to players who like to sit in the same spot all game hell that's how i've had to play this map otherwise it's like crossing a street while i have a sniper pointed at me while i'm sitting in my slow moving car jfk joke there but you get it you want to push through training course there's only one line of sight, but you can get shot all the way from f***ing operations building from the opposite side of the map, and you literally can't do anything about it because all you can see slash hit is their upper chest and on. There is a spot on the opposite side to take care of these, but now you're fighting long range angles with ARs, SMGs, unless you're forced to use a sniper. It's a horrible push zone. The only way to consistently get across the map is to either take the incredibly long way around the map or fight through shoot house to get to your enemy. The only time this map is fun is while playing inside of shoot house. Well, that's odd. I remember a similar feeling from Modern Warfare 2019. Okay, okay, enough negatives about this. I know slower paced players will love this map as well as players who like to play corners and angles. Overall, this is definitely a toss up between play styles and I will only be poking it with a 10 foot pole. And finally, the only other map I've been enjoying, however, with some adjustments that need to be made, Baldaris Museum. This map has been a perfect mix of short, medium, and long range. There's plenty of areas to play with your play style. However, the this map has a ton of waste of space again that I don't see a lot of players use, like the entirety of the Garden, Arrival Plaza, Dying Center, and Overlook. For 12v12s, I could see these areas being used more, but as it stands, they're always typically empty, as most of the fights even in Domination, take place at South Gallery, North Gallery, and Skybridge, where the points are. Visibility in certain areas of the map as well is terrible. Contrast changes happen a lot, which can get you killed. Inside of Domination, the B flag is in a horrible place. You can get dropped on from the Skybridge, while also having to watch spots from the Courtyard and the Sculpture Garden. Honestly, a fix for the B flag in Domination is just move it further back to the Sculpture Garden. You still have both paths leading up to a middle point, but you don't have to worry about people dropping from up top of you. You don't have to worry about five different areas on the B flag. It's much less clutter whenever you're having to deal with capturing the objective. There's also the issue of the mounting position on this escalator. You can mount here and you are way lower than your player model is for the enemy, allowing for easy cleanups. Overall, a B tier map that could easily 
potentially be A plus to S tier with the changes to how lighting works. Less empty space mixed in with its already positives to allowing almost all play styles in one map. This was also my least played map as it was taken out due to some lighting bug, but from the short amount of time I did play on it, I didn't have a lot of issues besides the aforementioned complaints. That's my take on all the maps so far. Most of the maps have been pretty mid tier besides Mercado Los Almas, and from the variety of these maps, I have to think and wonder if most of the maps were more designed for these 12v12 or larger style modes such as Warzone. I definitely think with some changes to each map and adjustments along the way, we could be in for a Call of Duty that offers a unique and polished experience in terms of the map side, but it just isn't there yet. Overall, I've been enjoying myself playing across the beta as well as messing around with all the options that the beta has given us. Obviously, the feedback is based on my opinion. I would love to discuss more with you and down in the comments below, so feel free to comment what you think of the maps and how they play. It'll be interesting to see all the takes on how the maps feel. I'll be covering more Modern Warfare 2 in the future as well as providing feedback for other aspects of the beta, so stay tuned by clicking that subscribe button. It's totally free and you can opt out at any time. You won't hurt my feelings if you don't, but I appreciate every single one of you that clicked on this video all the same. Much love. I'll catch you in the next one.